Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am Ugly Money Nietzsche, and welcome to yet another episode of the Ugly Money Podcast. <laughs> I got a special guest in the building. The Streets A&R. Mr. Real Nigga Radio himself. A living legend. I said a living legend. <laughs> and we meant that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, show your love one time for bigger ranking. Brother, brother, brother. First and foremost, I appreciate you making taking some time out to uh, you know, come 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 rock with us, man. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh come come check out Ugly Money Studios and I appreciate you coming through. Hey man, you know, we came from the we came out of the mud together. Facts. <laughs> no, facts. You know, a lot, a lot of people start doing this and the internet pick them up and they, they press buttons and press enter and press send. <laughs> we, we we had to bring what we have to people. Facts. No facts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And that's the difference, you know what I'm saying? It's a better feeling. You have more to talk about mm. because we did a lot, you know what I'm mm. saying? Now you are you are an inspiration to uh people all over the all over the world, especially within the industry, um, being so widely respected. Uh can we talk about longevity? Man, long, to to me, longevity is reinventing yourself. Mm. You know, if if you look at where I'm coming from, every year I reinvent myself with something. Every single year. So, because I'm a type of person like this. New Year's Eve, you can catch me in the bathroom with my phone, deleting all the numbers that didn't do shit for me, that didn't say anything good, do nothing. Like, you, you, you're on my phone a whole year, but you didn't bring me nothing. That is like a greeting. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So, if, if you've been in my phone and all you call, hey, man, I heard this and oh, this person got shot or this happened, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Because you, you're fucking my energy up while I'm trying to go work out. I'm trying to go do something. I'm getting this bad news from you. I could catch it on the news. <laughs> you feel me? Yes, sir. So, I, I, every year, I just start deleting them delete, and, I, and start thinking of ways to be better with my kids. You know what I'm saying? Because doing this, in this hip hop, I lost a whole lot of beautiful women. Wow. That said, they love me to death, but this they just couldn't take this because it's so hard to get to the top. It's so Because in this business, every year is a different challenge. You can't just be all right and feel like you're going to sit on top for the rest no, of your I'm life. I'm trying to tell you. You can't get complacent. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so the longevity is reinvent yourself and just keep God first and take care of your kids. Because when you take care of your kids, God going to make sure you're good because he ain't going to let them suffer. Facts. No facts, no facts. That's a gem right there. A lot of people don't talk about that enough. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, I never understood how people can hang out with guys that that don't take care of the kids. It's just, it's just weird to me. I'm like, you, you got this man that has a, has a, has a kid that that is a part of him, and a piece of him, and you know, and he doesn't want to take care of that or that child. Well, how the hell you expect him to take care of you? <laughs> it, 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 I always tell niggas like, one of the greatest thing in the world. Is the orgasm. Mm. The best thing in the fucking world is orgasm. So how can you take care of your seed? Come on. You make so much fun making that seed. <laughs> if you're doing it right, you damn sure better. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter if you do it right or wrong. Orgasm is orgasm. Facts. 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 <laughs> you feel what I'm coming from. Not so fact. the kids, man, like, I got 12 kids. I got 10 girls and two boys. And every year, man, while they're in college, I pay their rent. Mm. Their car insurance, everything before I pay my bills. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, man, when you start taking care of your children, man, and you get into that mode, God don't let you chase money no more. Ooh. He just bring money to you. So you be like, okay, I got one at Florida State. I got one at FAM. I got one at University of Florida. Man, how am I going to pay these bills this month? And God just work it out. You just see it's coming to the yeah. phone. And you're thinking like, oh, my God, how, you know, and, 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 because I caught myself one time yeah. being that nigga who feel like because I did a nigga a favor, he supposed to do me back a favor. Mm. And um, I had an artist. I broke the artist. And it was my birthday. And he couldn't even come to my birthday, and I broke him from scratch. And I was just like, man, this is fucked up. And um, I got a life coach. Yeah. You know, back in the days, I, w I went and got this life coach. He's an older dude. He's a dude that married me, too. An older dude, and um, we just started talking, and he said, "Well, bigger, you you really don't understand how blessed you is. 
How you worried about this man not coming to your birthday party? But your kids are in college. You got a brand new car. You're living good. He said, you get your blessing from God, not from man. How the hell are you going to sit here and expect a man to bless you? A man can give you an offering, but a man cannot bless you, bigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, dog, I slept on that. And I woke up again, reinvent myself again. And I just feel like God put me here to help these young niggas get out the street before the law trick them out the streets. It's always been my motto. It's always been my thing. And I put more niggas in the game than Phil Jackson. Yeah, facts. You know? <laughs> I know that's no cap. But at the same time, being real is given without expecting nothing. So when you get it, you're surprised. Mm. Like, damn, nigga. Did I deserve this? Like, this past Saturday, um, Christmas, Christmas night, they, they honored me in Jacksonville, man. And of all the awards I ever got, I got like 50, 60 awards. Yeah. But of all the awards I got, to see the fans really that came out, like, just look at me in my eye and tell me they love me. Because I created a culture. You know, when I'm coming up, I'm doing 25, 3,000 people in the club, no artists, no nothing. Nobody ever seen nothing like yeah. that, man. Yeah. Of course, my documentary be out <laughs> later on this year, and they see it. Like, I was packing the club, just me, man. They used to call me. The ghetto CNN, man. Come on, man. Martin Luther King Jr. When I do a block party, man, the whole city shut down. <laughs> People get killed in my parking lot because I was so neutral being from Jamaica. I didn't choose no side. So I just turn up and I shot everybody out. So when I'm doing a party back in the days, if you owe somebody for a quarter kill, two uh. ounces or something, you're going to see my, my party because everybody coming. Your enemies coming, your friends coming, yeah. everybody coming. You feel me? So the the foundation that I lay for this thing here, dog, I'm not saying can't nobody else do it because people do it every day. Mm -hmm. But I am very, very sincere about mine. If I love you, I love you. And I'm I'm easily get hurt with music. You can hurt me just like a girl can break my heart. Yeah. That's how this music she can break my heart. Wow. That's how that's how passionate I am about this. Whatever you do and don't get paid for it and get up in the morning and do it again, that's called passion. Yeah, facts. You know? And a lot of them times. Bro. I ain't doing this shit no more, man. I'm still going to get me a job. I'm sick of this shit. You get up in the morning trying to find how you can lose some more money. <laughs> yeah, you. that mean you love it. Come on, man. It's a passion, dog. God, because I always tell people, I, want, I, I would love to be a preacher. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be appointed. I want to be anointed. Come on. Because if I'm appointed... I just have to think too much of what to do. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come but on. I'm anointed, it's like, it's like what we do, we anointed to do this. So we can sit here, no script, no nothing. And every, and people are like, how, did, how the hell they flowing? He's not looking at no computer. Because everybody doing these things, they got their little yeah. list. And yeah. I'm going to ask him this and ask him that. No. no. I feel like if you're my friend and you passed away, God forbid that might happen. And they said, bigger, I want you to speak for him. I shouldn't have nothing written down. Nigga, you're my friend. How the hell am I going to be like, well, um, I met. No, man. You just come off the top. You just come off the top because that's love. You know what I'm saying? Just come off the top and give it to him blood raw like it is. You feel mm -hmm. me? You know, I said, man, man, that nigga owed me some money, but still I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, still, I still love you, boy. <laughs> you gonna get it some other time, though. <laughs> hey, bigger, talk to me about, um, you know, I, 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 I've been in the industry for a little bit myself, and uh, you know, and navigating my way through, you know, uh, relationships and the power of them. And I've seen that uh, a relationship seems like it's worth more than money. Oh my God! Come on, man. No, I could I could go anywhere in the United States and just go up in the DJ booth and grab the microphone and the DJ would say nothing. Certain people, hey man, what you doing? Don't touch this. I could go anywhere, man, because I've always been good to people. Mm. You feel me? And people don't understand like the relationship. And I tell people all the time about this business, about this. Cause my mom always tell me, if you have good manners, it could take you around the world. Yeah. You got bad attitude and bad manners, you only go halfway. And half the bitches want to kill you. <laughs> Facts. You see what I'm saying? So me, my relationship with people, dog, New York, everywhere, is just perfectly good relationship. And I, especially the people who is good, I will not make it go no further. Like, not not to change subject, but yeah, yeah. like um, my man push um, that do the push the um, um, dude. 
Yeah, dude. Shouts out, dude. Dude got so many goddamn names. I do pride on. You know, he got so many names. The man changed my life, baby. But, man, look, dog. This nigga right here, man, is, is the type of nigga, like, you won't hear from this nigga, like, in about three, four months, right? <laughs> the nigga just call you my mom and be like, hey, God bless you today. How you doing? <laughs> dude. Like, how can you come? What, what you gonna say? <laughs> like, <laughs> you gotta love him. Me and the nigga argued on the phone one day. We argued, <laughs> and we didn't talk for about we didn't talk for about four months. That nigga called me like, "Come on, man, we way better than this, man." Like, and then I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't malice people, but I nah. never ran into him. Yeah. And that nigga taught me. He taught me this game, man. That nigga is one of the smartest motherfuckers I've met in my life. He put shit together. You feel me? He put shit together. And I think, I think you know, the, I think uh, some of dudes, like his superpower is he sees things in people that, that they might not see in themselves. Sometimes. I thought he was your daddy because y'all look like, you know, <laughs> Hey, that's, first, that's, why they, that's why they tell me to sign. If, if y'all don't know what we talking about, we talking about Push Management CEO, Duprano, the guy that signed me, 8 Ball and MJG's manager. Shouts out to dude is a guy that actually signed me. You know, they used, to always, they used to always make that joke, like, you only signed them because he got down that shit. <laughs> man, I said, man. <laughs> Dog, that was the start of, you know. And, 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 and in this music business, you're going to have differences with people. Yeah. Because sometimes you see shit that they don't see. And they see shit that you don't see. You might see from here to, to um, the airport. He might see from here to Virgin Islands. He got a broader horizon. Yes, sir. Our older man told me one time, he said, if you don't need help with what you're doing, your shit ain't big enough. Mm. That's some less shit. That's just for you. But if you don't need help, cause every, if you got some big shit, you need help to get it bigger. Facts. You know? And um, just like me, take for instance, I never really knew what you had here. Wow. I seen it a couple of times, and I'm like, damn, I saw Kingpin. I was like, man, I got to go fuck with my dog. Appreciate like, this shit is it's beautiful. Thank you, brother. You know what I'm saying? It's a one-on-one -on -one thing, and it's good. And I do this thing myself, so I'm like... If we can share what we have with each other, you come out, interview you, some of your people come to my place, some of my people come to your mm -hmm. place, you know, it's just an exchange thing. Exactly. Because I ain't going to lie to you, my nigga, what you got going on, when I came in this moment, yeah. you got a cup <laughs> I said, this nigga, what they call that shit, like a cult. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 try, nigga. We try. You when know, I hit the door. Everybody had dreads when I hit the door. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't see the regular head niggas until I got in this room. <laughs> everybody got shit hanging off. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm it's like, that ugly money, man. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, where the hell am I? And it's like, watch you grow with, you know, with all the stuff you do with the independent yes, artist. That's my life. Yes, sir. Most of everything I own, I own it through independent. Yes, sir. Big artists don't ever pay you nothing. Hmm. You get them to get the independent artists to pay. Ooh. Because if they was here, the independent artists, I got to be there too. So independent artists be like, man, bigger man, um, I see you dropping an album, man. You know, I said, dog, I supposed to drop an album all my life. And yeah, I just got my budget to do my shit. I said, well, I, well, I want to get a song on this. Well, no, I'm using all the big niggas this time. <laughs> <laughs> right. And said, well, I said, no, this, this, this. This is my last, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. My first and my last. I'm a grown ass nigga. Yeah. This is my retirement check right here. For everything I put out, I just want, you know, I didn't sow sunflower seed and reap corn. Come on. I sow corn and reap corn. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Some niggas just, just, just come in the game and be like, hey, man, um, I see this. Nigga, you ain't Lucha. I can't do your tape like Lucha because you're not Lucha. Exactly. Oh, don't you have a personality of your own? I don't care if you sound like a person, mm -hmm. but do you have a personality? Because in the music game, you can sound like somebody, but have your own personality. Fact. You know what I'm saying? You can't be like another person. Got to be yourself. You know, and I feel like niggas like me and you, dog. <laughs> if niggas know how much money we spend to see a few dollars. Whew. If niggas Whew. Know, I, I do came to me the other day. I, said, I do. I do say, hey man, I need to talk to you as an OG. And I said, what's wrong? I said, Man, this nigga charged me two grand to open up for Kodak, man. And 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 I said, dog, do you know he paid 200 and something grand for Kodak? Mm -hmm. Do you know the place he had was $52,000? Mm -hmm. Commercials and promotions alone was almost 28 grand. And that board that's on the back with all them lights and shit, that man paid 15 grand for that. That man got to make 301 grand just to make a profit. One, you know what I'm saying? He, he 300 in. Exactly. And you hear complaining about paying. Well, don't do it. Don't do it. 
Don't do it. He charged you that because this, and I, you know, I'm not saying I do that. I'm just mm-hmm. saying like, he charged the money he spun. If he gonna let you get up there, he had to spend three hundred to bring all these people out here. Exactly. So you spend two grand to inherit this crowd, and and speak to them. Man, that's a blessing, man. You feel me? That's a blessing. So you were like, man, you know, like like like. I said, well, did you negotiate with him? He said, no, nah, I just go. I said, well, you are what you negotiate. If you negotiate two grand, nigga, that's what it's worth. Yeah. If you negotiate $10, that's what it's worth. You know, so a lot of people just look at this thing like, man, ugly money, that man, they're doing this shit, man. They, they had age. I know I could do this. Please, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Please. <laughs> go ahead, child. <laughs> Please. Nigga, I will rent the place for you. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't understand just, just how they, 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 they see the trophies. They don't see the practices. They don't see the losses. They, you know what I mean? <laughs> Dog, I was just telling my nigga in there, I said, niggas don't see how many times you sprained your ankle, mm. how many times you broke your knee. But when you're in the end zone, everybody celebrate with you. Nobody want to know the story, but they want the glory. And the glory comes with the fucking story. Come on. You know? Because you, you only get what you put in, yes, man. Sir. You feel me? You know, yes, I know niggas have sex all their life and got no kids. <laughs> I know some niggas as soon as they stick that bitch in the pow. pow. <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> and she look at that wood, she get she get knocked off. I'm telling you, I'm fertile in hell, man. <laughs> hey, you kiss a motherfucker. That <laughs> she gone. She got twins. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so you know, people don't know, man. You got you got to get in this shit. You got to get in your own mode. You know what I'm saying? Because back in, like I said, back in the days. We had to go get it. Now it's all about popularity. Yes, sir. And you're popular, nigga. You can get some traction. Every popular motherfucker got some traction, nigga. Mm-hmm. You nigga, nigga, nigga <laughs> we out here working all our life. I nigga get on YouTube and, and start testing some little toys. This shit. Exactly. This nigga got five million dollars. Exactly. It's crazy. What the fuck I'm doing it's wrong? Crazy. <laughs> but that just ain't yours. God put us all here, and He give us, give all of us our little thing to do. Yes, sir. And as long as we do it and praise him for it and thank him for it, man, we're going to be successful. Because I tell a nigga, if I do this until I'm 65 and I'm broke, I'm going to write a book called The Life of, Unse- of a Successful Failure. Mm. And at the end of the book, I'm going to say, just don't do what I do. <laughs> I say, if I get some money then. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> but I'm not going to give up. Facts. No, facts. Facts. <laughs> Like what? What? What keeps you going? Like you know, being in the industry, you know, it's a lot of ups and downs. It's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of term, you know, like turmoils, trials, and tribulations. Like for you being, you know, being able to sustain and keep going year after year after year. I mean, bro, you you still work like you like you're 19. You know? What yeah, I mean? definitely. Um, what keeps me going, man, is I don't sit down and conversate about people. Mm. Like if if you come to me, and you say, well. Man, a nigga such and such, man, you know, we be partner, my nigga and the niggas. I'm like, nah, you know. Such and such cool with me. Yeah. You never done that to me. Exactly. And the conversation is done. There it is. I'm not going to call such and such and be like, hey, man, I'm talking to meet you, man. He talking about you ain't shit now. Because now you're spreading the disease. Yeah. You feel me? Now you're just a bitch. You be on the best phone. as fuck. Yeah, you, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So what keeps me going is like I stay out of people's business. Come on. And I respect people's craft. Because every DJ, DJ different, every artist rap different. I mean, you can't compare them with each other. You just got to deal with that person, with that personality. And if the person ain't got no work ethics, take your time and leave them. Hmm. Because the work ethics mean so much. If they ain't got that, leave. Because if I tell you, hey, man, you got to go to meet you, man, 5 o'clock in the morning, man, and, all, and go on and get this interview. And, 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 man, I got, okay, bye. Yeah. If I got to push you to go do something to make you better, you kiss my ass, nigga. Mm-mm. I do that with my kids. I ain't gonna do it with no nigga. I've always, um, I've always harped on on talent and, and and work ethic and hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. You know, and I, I've always believed that like a person can be talented as hell, but if they don't work the talent that they have, you know, it's it's it's, it's a waste. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, now, I always wonder, can you see like Lucci when you started working with Lucci? Did you know that he was a star day one, or is that something that developed? Man, let me tell you. I mean, some artists you can. Let me tell you why I know Lucha was a star. I went in the room, and nigga had about twenty niggas in the in the studio with him, just sitting everywhere. 
And every motherfucking song, them niggas song that bitch word for word. Let me tell you something, <laughs> tell you something about black people. If they don't like your song, they just don't like your song. But yeah. if you got some money, they still hang with you. Hmm. These niggas song every single song. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. That nigga was like a Mississippi mass <laughs> choir. And I'm like, oh, man, this is great. And that's what I, when I go around an artist and the niggas around him be singing the song. That shit gets me. Mm. And like, you know, I'm an A&R, and um, niggas come to, 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 to think it's a game, they be like, bigger rank. I said, dog, if you come in here to talk to me about some music, and your music playing, and you don't get up and start rapping that motherfucker, I'm leaving the room. Exactly. Because it ain't your song. If you don't believe in it, how the hell can I believe in it? Come on, now. You know? So that's my thing. When I see... But I see that from the start, and then I could tell, by the way, nigga put their lyrics together. And then I, I can hear certain people, I know I can help them grow. Mm. Because if nigga, if, if nigga been in Augusta all their life, yeah. I never go nowhere. How he gonna rap about it is what he know. But you take him to New York, to Miami, start doing some shit, they can hear the lyrics change a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can't force a person to rap about something they ain't never seen or exactly. been with. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I can tell. I can tell by the way the people around them rap their song and I could tell how 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 an artist just wanna record, just wanna record, just wanna record. I'm like, even though you got some artists recording a lot some bullshit. <laughs> totally. Know? But at least he got that ethic, that work ethics. You can change what's going on. So that's how I see I can see a I can see it in the artist by how their peers around him act and how they really, really want it. Mm. You feel me? Cause some of them feel like get me a hit, get me some chains, get me a Hellcat. <laughs> I think you all actually hit me in my DM and said, look, man, um, I want you to sign me. I don't want no money. I want like 20 G's and a Hellcat. I'm like, that's a lot of fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> like he doing you a favor. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, but, you know, I, I ain't going to hurt nobody's feelings, you know what I'm saying? I always tell them, you know, you know, the chicken ain't bake yet. Put it back in the oven and just keep putting a little, little water on it and whatever. And it get right. You know what, what, what artists had to grow on you? Rollo. Yeah. Like when I met Rollo, Rollo and I, I broke Boosie. I broke Boosie and Webby in Come South on. Florida, yes, South Carolina. So like Boosie had that voice, but Rollo had to grow on me. But the thing about Rollo, when I met Rollo and I heard him, I said, okay, I gotta get used to his voice. But when you meet this nigga dog. Great person. <laughs> Solid, ain't he? Man, when you meet this nigga, dog, this nigga got every quality that you want a friend to have. Rollo would never miss a birthday, hmm. an anniversary. No man, I didn't know this nigga know my anniversary, nigga. Man, I just called and say happy anniversary. Hmm. So when that nigga called me and said, my album dropping, man, I got the Red of Sean and um and uh, Mozzie on the song, I need to do the intro. I almost broke my leg. Mm. To go, anybody that's called, I'll be like, well, you know, it's going to be a little He's, yeah, yeah, attached yeah. to it, but yeah. not him. And it's like people like y'all that I've been around. Cause I, dog, I remember you had a song, and the song was doing <laughs> decent. And, you, and I'm like, where the fuck? Like, this nigga hosting parties every freaking <laughs> night. There was, people were trying to book the nigga for the show. This nigga said, no, nah, I got my own show. <laughs> Do he stay I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I didn't understand, but dog would like, and that's me. I used to rap. Yeah. I used to rap reggae. I do the reggae thing. Mm -hmm. But then I start talking in the microphone, and that's where I found myself. I can I can come in the club, and I can start my night off with one person. Yes, sir. You know, like, like such and such, what up, boy? Well, yeah, like you hit the lotto tonight, boy. Mm -hmm. You're fresh. Get in there. start from there. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't have a start. I could start. I could look at one a girl or anybody and just start my night and just move on. Like a comedian, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because I like to have fun, because if I can't joke with you, then I can't be serious with you. Come on. So my thing, dog, messing with you, <laughs> it just <laughs> it's, it's like this, I'm like, how many jobs this nigga got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody was trying to get us down to Florida. This nigga got a show in Augusta and <laughs> Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> he do, he putting on the shows himself. Hey, big, I had to go get it, man. <laughs> man I, respect. I think he was on the radio too. Yeah, I was on the radio. Was I was on the radio. radio. I was on Power One Hundred Seven, and then I, and I was rapping, and I actually had part ownership of a club in Augusta, and then I was promoting too, because I was like, I can't sit here and wait on somebody to give me an opportunity. I, I ain't got that long. I'm gonna have to, if, if I gotta go make the opportunity myself, I'm gonna go make it. I I, I tell niggas, man. I tell rappers like being a being an artist. It's like being a gangster. Now talk about it. It's all about patience and opportunity. 
you be patient. When the opportunity comes, you grab it. Yes, sir. First impression is your last impression. That opportunity might never come back again. Right. So I remember one time a nigga called me. He said, um, Bigger, I'm doing, um, I think it was Hip Hop, Hip Hop Awards on TV. Yeah. And he said, uh, it was in Miami. And he said, man, uh, I need you to come DJ for me. This TV. Mm. I said, man, I can't come because I did a little contract with Spin Rally and them because it was A3C here. You know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. I said, nigga, you going to miss TV for that? I said, TV always going to be here, but I got a contract with these people. That's that's my life. I can't just fuck my life over for just a TV shit. You know what I'm saying? All my friends were like, man, fuck this shit. I get on BT. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, "No, I'm good, my nigga. I'm gonna do this." Do you ever, do you ever think that that like that that because that's that's like morals, you know what I'm saying? That's a moral compass. Do you ever think that that moral compass has ever held you back in your career? Yeah, yeah. I miss I miss a couple of things because I'm a lawyer. Mm. I miss a couple of things, a couple of shots, but I made great money, and I'm real happy. And the thing about God, as long as you, I, when I get up in the morning, I just tell God just. Thank you, Jesus, for waking me up. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> I'm finna go out there filling the blanks. Come on. You know, I don't make a whole lot of plans for five years from now because God made the ultimate plan. Mm. I might make a plan five years. All y'all invited, I'll be gone in two years. God made the ultimate plan. So whatever I said, I said, in five years, I'd like to be here if God spares my life. You know, I've, you know, um, I'm a very, I, I was always humble. Yes, sir. I was always touchable. You could touch me on the shoulder and say, I got a record, boom, no matter how big I got. Mm. I was walking around in a, in a Timex watch for like five years <laughs> doing this shit until I can wear me a $50,000 Rolex Come on, on my get hand. In there, get in there, get like in I feel like I deserve it. But I'm not going to diamond it out all the way, but I diamond my chain out or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, because this is something special. Ever since I got a Rolex watch, I ain't never been late for no appointment. Come on, talk about it. <laughs> because that's when times become money. Mm. You know, I was talking to a dude the other day, and he just run his mouth. I said, I can't see how you run your mouth with all that diamond in there. You can't lie with so much money in your mouth. <laughs> like, come on, man, be straight up, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And he's like, he got mad. Like, what you mean? I'm like, you're not telling the truth. You got hundred thousand dollars in your mouth lying nigga how can you lying out with all this money in your mouth <laughs> money all the big you you know if you're gonna lie that's lie with some ragged ass teeth nigga i respect you know what i'm saying me i respect everything i got out this game because everything i got this game i earn it ain't nothing i ever got from this game that i didn't earn i paid publishers thirty five hundred dollars a month i ain't know what the hell i was doing but i just wanted to be a star hmm. she was giving her intern my work. Bitch, I want you to do my work. I'm paying you. And I'm not big, so I want you to get me big. Mm-hmm. And you have to pay and lose all that money to learn the game. And to learn this game, man, because you got the rap game and you got the rap business. Come on. The rap game, go how you spinning your wheels like a goddamn <laughs> boom, yep. boom, 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 all day long. Yeah. But the rap business? Yes, sir. Nigga, come on, nigga. I had to become an A&R to learn about the shortcuts. <laughs> the shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? Learn about the cheat code. They, they do exist. You know, because, but you have to spend money and get in the game to get that. It's a fraternity. Hmm. You know? So for, for me to sit down and give you all the game I pay to learn, sometimes I feel like I'm just giving away my talent. Come on. Something that took you years and years to learn. Somebody just wants you to just walk up to them and give it all to yeah. them. Yeah. Man, you man, you a DJ, man. You, I say you a cook, bitch. Come cook for me then. <laughs> you a chef. Come come to my house and cook for me for free then, nigga. Yeah, no. Free you too know. expensive. Oh, come on, man. That's my word. Yeah, I, I you know. It's Got that's, no that's, value on it. It's free. That's a that's that's a that's a phrase that uh DJ such and such first put me on. I got a feeling that you might have put it on him or whatever. And it, and, and, and that's, listen, yeah. I I use it every day. <laughs> yeah. Free is too expensive. expensive. <laughs> and the other time a man just do me a favor. Hmm. Like, what favor? I what you know what now sometimes you can get a favor, yeah, but you can't just get the whole shebang. You know what I'm saying? 
and, and, and a lot of people don't understand. You can go out there and you buy the rims and all this shit and all this, buy these hoes and throw all the money and everything, but you can't spend nothing on your career. I'm supposed to be responsible for the broke part of your career. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> you know, I want to fuck with you while you're spending some money. Yeah. Because yeah. every nigga ever spent money with me for a mixtape. They, I go lower and lower until it become nothing. If I do 10 mixed in for you, the last, I, after I charge you the first one, it's half price, then it's, then it's a little bit, then all you got to pay is my producer to put it together. Mm. Because you kept coming back, and you make people come to me because you came back to me. Steady working. You, you, you feel what I'm saying? Because to me, my nigga, no one makes it out of life alive. Nobody. So all we can do is leave our legacy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And our legacy is what we do. I want people to talk about me years after I'm gone. Years after I'm gone. And my, you know, my BMI, my sound exchange, all that shit gonna be coming to my kids, my grandkids, way after I'm gone. Yeah, when the Kingpin came over here, he uh he pulled up your your streaming numbers, sir. They were quite <laughs> they were hold on, let me give a bomb. <laughs> it was hey, it was quite nice. <laughs> I don't know too many rappers that's even doing them kind of numbers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are hey, you a DJ? Kingpin is is one of those I don't know, one that's one of the best friends I ever had in my life. Sir. And uh King I met Kingpin twenty twenty three years ago. And Kingpin came in the room and said, I wanna work for you. I'm listening to real nigga radio. I want to work for you. I had an office in Jacksonville. And I said, um, you know, I got a couple girls working for me, a couple DJs and stuff. Kingpin went out and promote and put some stuff together and came for his check. <laughs> and I said, um, let's go in the other room. I said, I want you to be my partner. You, you the only nigga I ever met work harder than me. Yes, he works. And my nigga. For everything I've ever been through in life, that man had been by my side. I even had a relationship where I was breaking up and Kingpin come in the room and saved the relationship. Mm. Kingpin is like a fucking Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> <laughs> Shouts out Kingpin, man. <laughs> and for years, man, we ate together. It was time when we didn't know when our rent was going to pay it. And we just get on, Kingpin get on the phone, boom, 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 and everything was good. And he's been like my brother, not my best friend, but my brother for life. My brother. I, I think we all need that. You oh, know what I'm saying? I think, on, I, think we, I think we all need, you know, those couple of solid individuals that's willing to go, you know, through the bad times and the good times. You know, I, I can remember me and such <laughs> at level two when I first got to Atlanta trying to figure it out. And we made six hundred dollars. And we was happy. Cause we had six hundred dollars, and he got three hundred, and I got three hundred, and we was in there like happy as hell that we made three hundred dollars a piece that night. And to see, you know, I, you know, me and my brother just, you just grow and continue to grow the gully. You know what I'm saying? Well, we might be spending, we might be splitting something with a couple more zeros on it. If, if, really? if it definitely feel good, you know what I'm saying? And and I believe you, you keep those people around you. You know what I'm saying? You keep them people for the long because they don't come across, they don't come around often. When you get one that's solid, that really is loyal, and stay down with you, you better take them with you. Man, a good business partner. Man, I met, I came here and I was the vice president of CTE, mm. and I met Sticker Bush, DJ Sticker. Bush. Okay, yeah. Me and Sticker Bush been friends over 18 years. We never had a fallout. We never hung up on each other. We never said nothing bad. But we always just been real close and trapped in front of the basement, real nigga. We do everything together, man. Sir. Our studio, everything, our podcast, everything. And he just, we never had a problem. You really don't find people that you never have a problem because he's a man of God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He's a, let me tell you what Sticky Bush did to me. When I came here, I was a Nebraska college, a college football fan. I, I love Nebraska. I grew up loving Nebraska. This man made me an Alabama fan. And mm. <laughs> hey, they serious about that. Oh, my God. They serious about that. Hey, that listen. Made, and, and, and when I became an Alabama fan, it's like, it's like I made some more family. <laughs> yes, sir. They serious about it. Them people don't play about it. They don't play man. about the college football. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Such and, and such a tell you, we, 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 we went to we went to where we was at um we was in the city. What was the name? What's the name of the town that they, they uh what's the name? We went to Dreamland Barbecue in uh what what's the name of the town that, that, that Alabama's at? In Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa, yes sir, yes sir. We went to Dreamland Barbecue in Tuscaloosa. I'll never forget. We on tour. And we just stopping between our stops, and and, and and we walk in there, and the Alabama game is on. And and, and as soon as they, you walk in, roll tide! 
<laughs> Roll Tide. And I remember we were sitting there eating, and Alabama scored. And I seen a young black brother look like he was, you know, a street nigga. Hug this 67-year-old white man like he was his brother. Yeah. And it was amazing to me at how sports, you know, Be brought them together. Barrier. Oh, it's no, yeah. There's no barrier in it. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I, that, that was amazing. I'm like, now normally I'm pretty sure that that white man would walk the other side of the street. You know what I'm saying? If he saw this kid mm -hmm. or whatever. But the fact that they both was Road Tide fans, they both, you know what I'm saying, it, it, it united them. And I, you know what? I think music does that with people too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I, I remember I was, in a, I was at a college one time. I had a, a college concert. And I was the first time I seen um, 21 Savage. Mm. And he had a song called Nigga Ain't Something About Nigga. <laughs> and all the white kids were like, Nigga Ain't Something <laughs> And I said, This is the only time they get away with it. Yes, sir. Music. Yes, sir. It's the only time you can get away with it. You know, it. It, make them, it make them feel like they're a part of it, but yeah. they don't got to go there. Yeah, I you guess. know? But they <laughs> can they just sing the lyrics? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, you singing it too. Yeah. <laughs> so they, you know, they feel like, oh, you know, we, we with the gang shit, but we ain't really got to go to the east side <laughs> to the gang shit. You know For what real. I mean? And, 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 and that's the dope thing about music. I think it just brings us together, especially when it's good. You know what I mean? Like, it just brings us together. Now, like, let, let's go back to Lucci, man, because uh, first and foremost, free Lucci. Um, I can I can just remember him breaking as an artist, and I know you've broken broken tons of artists, but I, I can just remember you. It seemed like you had a hands-on, uh, you know, relationship with, with, with Lucci and those early records with the patients and and things of that nature. Like, talk to me about like building that brand and and pushing this kid to uh to the point where he becomes a superstar. Well, the thing about Lucci. You know, I've done intros for other guys before. Mm -hmm. But when they shot the video and put it out, they never put, they just, they just kept me on the mixtape, mm. on the mixtape sites. They never put me on the DSPs and stuff like that. Lucha put me on the DSPs. Wow. Shot the video with me. I was a big part of everything. I'm, I'm you know, uh, as a DJ, to see your name in the casting thing and this when you come, your dressing room is right here. Like, I never used to that. I host big arena shows and got my little room, you know, you know what yeah, I yeah. I'm a DJ, but in that part. And then doing the um the reason I, I love Lucci, because I'm a DJ, when I talk, I talk and I stop and talk. When you're doing it in a video, it gotta be like a melody. You gotta keep, you gotta move. Mm. And he taught me how to do that. And then when I get on stage, when he got on tour and we got on stage, and I was very nervous because I, I rock big crowds. Yeah. But when I got up there to see, and then when I opened my mouth and the people start repeating every word, mm. I'm like, oh my God. It's like I get chills, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and he'll just look at me and he'll just hug me. That, but I love you, Unc. Every single time me and Lucha got on stage, I don't care what he's going through, whether he'll hug me when we do a song and say, I love you, Unc. I appreciate you, Unc. You know, when I talk to him on the phone, I'm like, I love you, young nigga. Like, I love you back, you know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir. And I, he, he listens to me because I have no ulterior motives. You know what I'm saying? We're both eating off the records, but I love him as a person. A lot of people, you know, he going through his little thing because in life, a lot of people go through obstacles. Mm. It's when you come back is what you do. And he going to be free in a minute because he really, you know, he's an innocent dude. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, you know, People might say this and say that. I said, y'all don't know this guy. The guy love his children. Yes, sir. Love his family. Take good care of his kids. You know what I'm saying? He have no problems when it comes to his children. And that's big for me. And his daddy's a Jamaican, too. Mm. And me and him is real cool, too. You know what I'm saying? So for me, man, Lucha was just that person that really showed me love. Like, I, I mean, Tuche, everybody, Gotti, yeah. all these guys showed me love. But Lucha... Treated me like a big unk. Yes, sir. You know, he asked me stuff. Man, what do you think about this? What do you think before, you know, him and Dolph. You know, him and Dolph always ask me. Like, Dolph will ask me about, like, one year Dolph called me. Um, i like, what up? He always check on me, you know? Mm -hmm. I said, what's up, man? I'm, I'm going to tell I and do the show. You going to be down there? I know my kids go to school there. Mm -hmm. I said, definitely. I'm going to be down there. I'm hosting the show. Mm -hmm. He said, I saw you on the fly. I just... <laughs> <laughs> so... He, he he was talking to me, and I said, well, we always do our birthday together because we, we born a couple of days apart. Mm -hmm. You know, me and Bancro was born on the same day, but me and Dolph, like, days apart. Wow. 
And um, dog said, I don't, I don't think I'm doing my birthday this year, man. I'm, and bigger man, I got so much. I said, dog, remember, it's a lot of niggas six foot six, a lot of niggas in prison. To be free is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Plus, the only piece of paper you own is your birth certificate, because that becomes your death certificate. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? You when for all these people going through all this shit, you're not gonna celebrate the day that God put you on this earth. All this stuff, you you you're making millions. You're not gonna celebrate God put you on this earth for that. And that nigga called me back about two days and said, you know what? I'm gonna do my birthday party. Yeah, it is. You know what I'm saying? So people like him and, and, and Luke, I if you listen to all my stuff, every intro with Luke, I'm talking to Luke. Wow. Just if you get tired of listening to all, every intro. Now it makes it makes sense now. Yeah. Just listen to every intro. Because the way the world is now with the younger generation, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the thing about it is when I was running to cars, serving with a little pistol in my back pocket, they looked up to me, not Michael Jordan. Hmm. So our destinies are tied together. So I have to come back and get them. So that's why I put up with them so much. Yeah. Because I know the example I set when I was younger. You feel me? Makes sense. So, Makes sense. so I, you know, I, I said some crazy shit sometimes because <laughs> I remember I, I was on the mic and I was listening to the shit the other day on YouTube. But we're like, "Hey man, you better look out for these young niggas, man. Your old niggas won't be able to go to the corner store and get a cigar." <laughs> I was just talking shit. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just talking shit. And sometimes as you grow and see how people respond to you, like 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 heartless. Yes, sir. Man, when the kids graduated three years ago, man, two years ago, two, three years ago, man, everybody was using my stuff in their speech. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> and I'm like, damn, okay, I got some here. Yeah. But as as popular as I am, a lot of people did, they knew my voice, but they didn't know my face. Mm. So when I did that thing for Two Chain on his last album, and uh, not the last one, but the one before that, when I was talking about, don't feel sorry, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, call, nigga always calling, complaining, quit complaining, and all that shit. Yes, that, sir. That shit that a dude was doing it on the internet, and that's how he done it. It was his skit, mm. and people were like, nigga, this bigger ranking, nigga, yes, sir. you know. And I'm saying to myself, like, mm, fuck, I don't care. I just love when people act like me anyway, because that doesn't make me bigger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there it is. But at the same time, my kids is like, no, these are your accolades. This is stuff that you did. Don't let nobody just take your stuff and let people think it's theirs. This is yours. I said, man, what do the season going to be to the season? Whatever I'm supposed to have, I'm going to have. What I'm supposed to get, I'm going to get. But my kids, they, they, my girls, they're real crazy about me and crazy about what I do because I taught them so well. You know what I'm saying? I said, if a nigga can't treat you like your daddy, come on. He might have to find you somebody else. You're damn right. You better, look, <laughs> and, and, and daddy, and daddy going to make the competition real fierce. Come that's on. one thing. That's one thing I, 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 um, I practice with my, my, my daughters, man. Like, I mean, hey, man, if a man don't open your door, you don't need to get in this car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, and, man, that's real. That's and, real. And, and things about that, you know I'm what I mean? I'm going to take that. No, nah, for facts, facts. If you only mm. want to open this door, you don't need to get in this car. Now, I, I, I'm going to take you back a little bit. Now, you may think that the first time that we met was uh, with Push, but uh, I met you way before then. I met you, first time I met Bigger Rankin was 2008 at the Hypnotize Tour. Come on, <laughs> look. Oh, man. I was still in the army. I used to. Um, I would get off work. I would get off work from the military. That's five why you're so disciplined, huh? Yeah, yeah. And no, I was in the military eight years. Yeah, I, I would get off work and I would haul ass to wherever the tour was. And I was I was a hype man for a guy named Luv Flu Season. Yep. And that and, and that was me, man. Yeah. He, he doing radio in um making the last time I seen him. Yeah, yeah, he's doing really well, man. He's doing really well. And I remember, man, just being like, man, that's bigger ranking. And even back then, bro, you know, you 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 always marketed and promoted your brand and promoted yourself so effectively. You know what I'm saying? Like the the, the real nigga radio brand and the bigger ranking, you know, it, it's just it's just something that uh that I always admire. Cause I'm like, man, like. He's taking this opportunity 
as a DJ that most people wouldn't take and just sit back and DJ and do whatever they do. But you make it seem like, no, this is my show. Oh, definitely. You feel what I'm saying? And I think that's something that, that a lot of DJs can, 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 can learn from. It's just like, nah, bro, you're not, you're not back there pushing the button. You're controlling this whole, this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? And I remember you going out there and <laughs> having that crowd upside down, man. Talk, talk to me about tour life, man. Talk to me about being on the road and, 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 and just moving city to city, man, because you still do it to this day. Man, tour is, is something that, that is still in me. You know what I'm saying? I try, you know, um, after I got to the hospital, I said I, I wasn't going to chill. Mm. And then just, I just back out here, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, being on stage... You know, I told people I'm the ghetto CNN. I'm the T.D. Jakes. <laughs> I'm the T.D. Jakes of the club. Yes, sir. Because I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. You know, I'm going to speak a little fuckery, but I'm going to talk some substance, too. And I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to tell you to take care of your children. I'm going to tell you to praise God. I might go drop me a little gospel in there. That is. You know what I'm saying? If, whenever you fight in the club and I drop a gospel, if you don't stop fighting, I say, oh, he going to hell. All of us going to hell. <laughs> yes. You know, so I me, mean, the tour thing kind of really, it makes me happy. It put me in a happy place, you know. And and now, you know, it's so crazy. Now I'll be telling my niggas, like, don't introduce me like that. Oh, the legendary. Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, don't do all that. Don't do all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, you know, I'm cool. I'm cool. And then just to, um, I was doing open for Kodak the other day, and I was playing documentary. Oh, wow. Lucy. And that song to me, like, I dedicate to all the young niggas, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And when when it came on, man, it went so berserk. I ain't had to say a word. Yeah. And I could feel the tear coming down. And I had my shades on. But I didn't want to lift my shade up and wipe my tear. You know, I'm a real nigga right yes, now. Sir. I don't yes, look sir. like a bitch up there. Exactly. You know exactly. <laughs> exactly. So the shit was so, so sad, dog. Like it's so I mean, it's it's not sad as in that way, but I'm just the energy and and, and and the love I'm getting, I'm like, oh man, my ears have spun well. Yes, sir. It was I've all worth taught, it. I've taught a lot. And um what the tour had did to me is like when I lost my kidney the first when I when I first like when I lost my kidney, I was in the hospital, man, for about three weeks and damn, I'm like, shit, doc, will I be able to do this again? He said, You're gonna go, you know, I go to dialysis three times a week. Mm -hmm. I just went to dialysis this morning, you know. Wow, wow. You know? And um sometimes I get a little tired or whatever, but I, I'm doing my thing. Yes, sir. And then the tour thing kept going. It kept going. And this year, my birthday, I was I made the most money in my life my birthday week. That's cool. every every year. And this past year, I had the COVID. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. And um, I'm gonna tell you, my nigga, like I just didn't know I was gonna make it, dog. Like it was just, I'm just gone. I'm just like, damn, you know. And, <laughs> one of the most enlightened things that happened to me when I lost my kidney, DJ Drama sent me some flowers and he sent me the J Prince book. Hmm. DJ Drama. Like, when it comes to mixtapes, I look up to Drama. Yes, sir. I didn't even know he knew I was sick. But then this time, I couldn't get no visitor. I'm just there alone. Hmm. And man, like, I can't sleep at night. I don't sleep no nights. I'm just there. And then they had to put, give me so much oxygen because I couldn't breathe. And they were telling me, it was three weeks, and man said, look, your lungs looking bad. I, um, I don't know, Mr. Plummer, but um, you're going to have to make a change because they come in here, want to send you home, but we're going to have to send you home with too much oxygen. Mm. We don't know if you'll make it at home. So... I'm like, damn, I've been trying for a week, blowing in the thing and doing and I still can't do it. So, you know what? I just laid on my back one night. I got up. I said, man, come on, man. I felt like God came in there and said, look, ain't no replacement for you. Yes, sir. What you going to do, nigga? <laughs> so I pick up a chair and I put a one part of the wall and put another chair the other part and just walk. Put my foot up on the chair, step down. Put my foot up, step down. I never knew in my life I had to learn how to breathe. I didn't know breathing was so important. And um, I did it, and I got down to three. And they gave me an oxygen thing, tank, and sent me home. And I told my girl, when I, my bathroom was in my bedroom, yeah. master bedroom. Yes, yeah, sir. If I walked to the bathroom, I was so tired, like I walked 70 miles. 
That's how bad it was. Yeah, that COVID, that COVID do it to you. Man, when God took me through that, my nigga, I said, I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to be at the office at TIG. Man, God took me through that thing. I was in the club, nigga, <laughs> screaming my lungs out, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I walk in the club, I was like, talk to me! <laughs> <laughs> it piped up, man. <laughs> you know, because people don't really understand, dog. Whenever you get in that position, you so happy to be back. You so happy to be alive. You so happy. For, for, for all my friends, when, when, I, when I went through my phone and my DMs, I went through that shit for three weeks. Hmm. Niggas just... Man, I, uh, whatever, I, I'm just praying for you, I'm just whatever. Because you never know how much people care about you until you get in that position. Exactly. So what that did, it made me change a lot more towards people. And hear them out. Not to be, not, not, not to be busy for them. Because you could be gone tomorrow. Like if I fuck with you, I ain't texting you, I'm going to call you. Yes, sir. Because I want to hear your voice. Know that you're okay. And um, I lost a bunch of friends to this COVID. Yes, sir. I lost Mika to this COVID. I'll pick up with Mika, man. And Mika, like, I mean, Mika was so was such a treasure that sometime, you know, God touched you with certain people in your life for like a little period or like a season, you know. She was with me for 10 years and just, just gone. I just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, rec- I, just, I just couldn't process Mika not being there. Every flight I catch, Mika don't go to sleep until I land in that area. Mm. Every every party I do, Mika don't go to sleep until I come out of the club and she know I'm safe. You know what I'm saying? Having a woman manager emotionally attached to you, you know what I'm saying? And um, I ain't going to lie, boss. I, I think about this shit all the time. And I, I'm really, you know, you know, sometimes you be trying to think the reasons for stuff. Yes, sir. Because I lost a son before. I be trying to think the reasons. And I was watching T.D. Jakes the other day. And T.J. Jake said, you know something, um, I wonder what, why COVID here. I wonder what is, what they're trying to teach us about COVID. And he said, he was watching the TV and he saw a man and man was like, yeah, man, I want to go to church and they, these churches ain't even open. Mm. Years ago, you was home watching football. You didn't exactly. give a damn about no <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But now, yes, sir. You mad talking about you can't go to church? Now you ready to turn to the Lord? You, you feel what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, like I said, this COVID thing has taught us a whole lot. Taught us how to hustle. We did that. Taught us how to keep going. You know what I'm saying? If COVID didn't taught you how to hustle, you ain't got to hustle. Yeah, if you, you if you ain't make no money in COVID, you ain't no hustle. You ain't got no hustle. Yeah, and that's problem. one thing I loved about you know, given we lost a lot. But one thing that I did, I think one positive thing is COVID made the hustlers hustle. And you yep. can see the difference between people that could get it on their own and figure it out and adapt to change. And a lot of people, and a lot of things that people that were comfortable where they were, mm-hmm. they fell. You feel what I'm saying? Because hip hop, hip hop is like this. You, you, you got to do hip hop because you love it. Mm-hmm. And it comes with the hustle. But if you hustle hip hop, hip hop going to hustle you. <laughs> Anybody come and hustle hip hop just for the check, it gonna hustle the shit out of you. Yeah, you're gonna get one or two checks, and then they're gonna get all the checks. Mm. You gonna it's like gambling. You go to the dog track, you're gonna win the first two down. <laughs> but after that, <laughs> like like I was telling my partner, whenever you go in a dice game and you see a nigga on the floor on his knees and roll his sleeve up number and start naming the dice, like mean him. <laughs> <laughs> he deep. <laughs> He deep in it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Folkston, Georgia. You got to be deep in it. You got to love this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you might not get paid for years and years at a time, and, you, and something got to keep you going. Whenever you see a nigga on your knee with his shirt rolled up, man, it's, it's work clothes. It's suit. He need to be home. That nigga, that nigga trying to get his yes, back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So I always learn, like, I don't gamble because I feel like what I have, it just means too much to me and my family. I bet you a dollar. <laughs> yeah, but I don't gamble. Yes, sir. I gambled before. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I gambled before, and I, I lost, and I never won it back. I tried to get it back for a long time. I had to keep losing more and more and more rolling dice. Come on. So I let it be. Leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? And I just keep my money. Now, bigger, you are um, worldly known for being able to break artists, and as I step into this corner of my career, of trying to break artists. Mm-hmm. I learned that how 
hard <laughs> and difficult. It's not easy. It's yeah. not easy taking somebody that someone doesn't know and getting them familiar to the point where they feel like, I love this artist. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some just, just some just some game on how you break artists? Number one, the artist got to have an open mind. He got to have an open mind. Because you, you might meet an artist right now and be like, you have a project out? Yeah, I got a project on Apple Title. I have it on. Okay, nigga. Well, who knows you? Like, who's going to go there and look for you? Mm. Why aren't your shit on the regular live mixtapes with the free stuff where people can go at least mm -hmm. taste, at least sample your shit and see how it is before they eat it? You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I, I want artists to have an open mind. I tell artists, like, you, you, you got to look at a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of, man, I'm a straight nigga, my nigga. I ain't with this Instagram <laughs> shit, my nigga. <laughs> well, uh, so you're not into the rap game. Nigga. You damn sure ain't. You know, you, you got to have a personality on this on this thing for them people to know who you are. And I tell a lot of guys, like, man, you know, I said, dog, just get up in the morning and just go pick your child up in your hand and be like, man, this is what I'm living for. Women eat that shit up. Mm. All that nigga, all these most of the nigga posts today is their music, some guns and some money. Come on, you 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 got to humanize yourself. So if you're working with an artist and they don't want to do all the, the human stuff, like man, go see your grandmama. Bring a little, bring, bring your mama a brown paper bag with a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? They do some shit. It's gutter, but it's, it's you know people eat that up. Exactly. You know, go sit with your grandmama and be like, this is why I'm living here, man. I'm gonna do everything for her, man. She did everything for me when I, you know. You got to humanize yourself. A lot of a lot of niggas don't want to do that. A lot of them just like, they're too tough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if you have a hard life. Don't give a hard life to everybody else. <laughs> you won't be depressing yeah. to everybody. Yeah, because they, cause, cause they, they ain't get out to you. Yeah. So I feel like with an artist, man, you get an artist right now, though, he have to have an open mind. And and you got, because a lot of people are like, man, I can't I, I can't see how this nigga going to take that man money. And, and uh, he know he ain't that good. He think he that good. <laughs> how the fuck am I going to piss on your dream? It's a lot of songs I heard on the radio I never liked that became platinum. A lot. You know, who who am I? I can't decide that your shit ain't going to go nowhere because hustle going to outbeat talent any day. Come on. You feel me? And most of these little niggas that see that be hustling, I repost that shit. Nigga hit me like, how much it cost to repost? I don't charge for that. I just do it because I see this person moving. Mm. But I'm moving, but I ain't seeing you, though. <laughs> now I'm going to start looking at you if I see you moving, and I'm, I'm going to repost your shit. Yeah. You know, but a lot, a lot of them don't understand the game, Michi. They come to you and they see where you're at. You know a lot of people and you have a lot of connections and they feel like you could do this for them. Mm -hmm. And then when they come to you half of the time, they got a manager, which is their friend. He don't know nothing. <laughs> Not a day. <laughs> so now I got to teach him plus break you. <laughs> oh, nigga, this double money. That's double work. <laughs> You know, a lot of niggas don't really understand. He could be your assistant. He could be a part of your team. Yeah. But for you to go somewhere, you got to get a decent manager. And you can only get a manager when you're getting paid shows or when you get a buzz. What the hell? I'm going to manage. Ain't I'm going to manage you and you ain't got, you ain't making no money. No, no, no. We, we just got to be a team around you right now and get you right and get you a good manager. And these guys are like, like if I have an artist right now, I'll be the manager because I kind of know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if we get to that point, I'm going to get him somebody that can bring all of us some money. Because there's people for that. You know what I'm saying? There are people that know way more than you know that can get them to the top. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the first time I went to New York that, just to do a press run with somebody, you're like, God damn, <laughs> we got to do all this shit. Yeah. And you go to L.A., same thing. Back to Atlanta, same thing. Houston, same thing. Every big place you go, you got to do all that shit. You go to L.A., you got to go to Instagram, you got to go to Triller, all this shit. And nigga be asking like, God damn, nigga. You got to go to YouTube. You got to go every fucking way. And the, the greatest thing about this shit, if you've been doing it long like hey, we have, everyone in this place you go to, you meet somebody you've been new. You're like, it's damn. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. You're like, oh. Bigger. Man, come here. Yeah. Like, shit, I know you work here. Come here. <laughs> the industry small, man. It's crazy. Yeah, for real. And that's what people don't know. As long as you keep it solid with everybody, every time you go somewhere in New York, L.A., it's a, it's a nigga that was with you in Atlanta, moved to L.A., that's in this office. And when he yell your name, everybody love you. 
You feel me? And I break records. I know most of the A&Rs from way back. So when I, uh, PDs, yeah. yeah, all that. So when I go places, you know, and, 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 and it's, it ain't all about money. I'd rather buy a nigga up here at Jordan and get some money. <laughs> you know, of course you got to give him some money to do certain things, but on your birthday, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to buy you a pair of drawers. Something you love, something you like. Mm. You can say, bigger gave it to you. If you got some kids, I might buy you a bassinet or something. You know what I'm saying? So something people can look at. Because in the music business, we just this is life. These are our brothers. And when something happened to one arm, it hurts. Even if you don't know a DJ, if you heard he pass away, man, that shit hurt, man. Our artists the same way, you know what I'm saying? Because we're all in the same shit together. Yes, sir. You know, when I leave my house every day, man, I want to make it back home to my family. So when I go on the road, I tell all my artists, you got pills, guns, whatever. Y'all just stay to y'all self. I don't ride with nobody. <laughs> it's me and my bodyguard. That's it. I'm, a, you know, my people. I don't, I don't ride with nobody who I don't, I don't know what you got in your pocket. I don't know if you got felony charges. I just want to make it back home to my family. I don't speed. None of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of me talking, man, you be acting like you a nigga daddy. I really feel like I'm your goddamn <laughs> daddy if I got to tell you that I do no stupid shit like yes, that. Sir. You feel me? Yes, sir. I just nigga weed selling every city. <laughs> Pills selling every fucking city. You ain't got to tell that shit with you. What, you was buried in there or something? No, nigga. Just go in and grab you a little something when you get there. Don't ride dirty because you know this is a job. I tell you, hip-hop is like this. You got to work eight hours a day to pay your rent, your car notes, all that shit. Sometimes ten hours. You got to give hip hop. If you're going to do this for money, you got to give it eight hours a day. Yes, sir. Whether you're on YouTube looking for shit, whether you're just reading about publishing, whatever, you got to give this shit eight hours and God going to bless you with it. Other than that, you're just playing with it. Mm. It's a full time job. Come on, man. It's a full time job. It's one of the best podcasts I ever did. You know I, that? I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Biggie. That, that means a lot, man. Because a lot of people don't understand. Like on my podcast, we talk a lot, a long time, but we just take the real good parts and put them together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't know when you're on a podcast, you, you talk a lot and you choose all the best things and put them together mm -hmm. so it'll be good because sometimes you'll be like, damn, I wish we'd have said this, but we wasn't there long. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate I it. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Big. Real talk. Now, um, we lost, we recently lost uh, a brother, a brother in music ourselves, you know what I'm saying? R.P. Young Dolph. Um, just real quick, we ain't got to harp on too much, you know what I'm saying? Talk to me about your relationship with Dolph and how, what kind of person he was. Man, I met Dolph at a um, IHOP. This guy named Ricardo, Ricardo Hunter, mm -hmm. do music, you know, do, do records. Ricardo was like, you got to meet this dude, man. And I met him, and he was just talking to me, but he was just like, yeah, you know, I'm doing this shit, man, but, like, I don't know, bigger man. Like, I don't know, man, but that nigga gave me six grand and gave me 13 records. I had the records for three and a half months hmm. because he, he he was supposed to come when we meet down here in Atlanta and do the tape. He wanted to be there. If you see the intro that I post on my thing, mm -hmm. after it's our first tape. And um, he was going through something, but he didn't tell me. So I did the intro and just been sitting, waiting. Man, he came. He said, man, you know, I got some problems. I had some money. I got caught with some bread and I had to go through this shit. You know what I'm saying? And I changed the intro. And the intro was so fucking crucial, man. He went nuts. <laughs> I said, oh, my God, man, we finna kill this shit. And we just became real cool. Then he, I started taking him on the road, and he pulled wisdom to that. Mm. He had a towel over his head. I got a video. He couldn't even talk when we go to the meet and greet. I talked for him. You know what I'm saying? And he told me, he said, bigger, I got to get this. I ain't going to let you waste your time with me. <coughs> Facts. I got to do so. I, I always believed in him, and I, I see how he treat people. So I had a song one time with Cool America, and I had him feature on the song. And we had to shoot the video. And he was with his family that was going overseas. I think it was the Bahamas or somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he came to Atlanta. And the guy got there to shoot the thing late. And um, their flight was leaving at 830. And he let them flew and stayed with me and shot the video. Wow. He said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to leave you, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ever going to leave you. I'm, I'm going to be here. And the other day when I went to his, you know, his memorial, just sitting in there, man, and I was just looking. I still can't believe it. 
Dolph called me all the time just to check on Q Money. He loved Q Money. Wow. You know, and he was just a guy, he loved his kids, mm -hmm. loved his family. He helped a lot of people. A lot of people don't, didn't notice until he died how much people he helped. And I just hope people can look at this and learn from it. You know, and um, I never played this record because I always say, I won't play a song that got to be the soundtrack to another nigga funeral. Come on. I don't play this record. None of my DJs play this record. And I beg them not to. You know what I'm saying? Cause this record, if you could spend this much time to do with this record, I feel like you could spend that time to make a hit. Yeah, yeah, you could. You know, you know, and you know, you can get your feelings out on a record and still not dissing a, um, a certain people. Yes, you know what I'm saying? So, I love Gotti. Me and Gotti go deep when it comes to that Memphis artist. Yeah, I he broke, was he was on the Hippie yeah, Store. Yeah, I night. broke a lot of them. You know, uh, I remember I broke Gotti, got um, Gotti to Florida, and we sit down and put his shit together. You know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And make it happen. You know what I'm saying? And I love him. I love him to death. But like I said, people ask me, like, man, um, what, what you think about Gotti and, uh, and Dolph Beef and, and all this stuff? And I would tell him, like, I'm from Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Homegrown beef, you, you can't come from out of state and, and, no. and, and make it right because Ain't you don't know do what happened. Yeah, yeah. But I love both of them. And um, I don't know what happened. You feel me? I can't, I'm not going to speculate. I don't know what happened. But I love, I, I love him. But you know, me and Dolph had a good relationship. Me and Gotti had a good relationship. You know what I'm saying? Me and all those guys up there, eight ball them Gigi, You know, them my niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shouts out Baller G, man. Yeah, Memphis is like, is like the soul of hip hop. No, they really, you know, they they are having an amazing run right now. Man, like everything coming out of Memphis. I mean, given Memphis always had somebody out there, but as of lately, Memphis <laughs> is killing it. They hard, man. Yeah, hold I love I, lo I love Memphis artists too, man. Just that little accent they be talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mersey. Yeah. <laughs> Mersey. Let, let's talk about Duval though, bigger. Let's talk about Duval. Now, as as of as of lately, Duval has had a had a uh, had a surge in uh in, in new rappers. Um uh Young and Ace. Not a wick. Not a wick. Uh Fulio. Papa, you know, Lil Papa. A lot of a lot of you know, Duval is popping them out. Mm. Um do you ever worry that the nature of their records, because, you know, it's a lot of... Yeah, like Chicago. They, 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 exactly. I was thinking the same thing. Like, you know, the nature of their records and how they how they, how they they are taking their, their beefs publicly, um, you know, with the music. Do you ever worry about it? Yeah, I worry about it all the time. I worry about it all the time because what people fail to understand <laughs> with these younger dudes is like, Everybody's fair game. Your sister, your brother, your cousin, your friend, everybody fair game. Back in the days, we beef with you. We just beef with you. Yeah. These people, you know, these younger generation get everybody involved. And it's very scary. But they're doing real better now. Like, yeah. I, I see how they, they're really coming out. And, I, and because those records have been so big, that, that, that the beef records... Mm -hmm. Like some of them just really fucking with that, <laughs> yeah. you know. But I pray, I pray they'll get better. I yeah. pray everything will be all right for them, and 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 they'll learn the right way and do the right thing. But certain people that eating, you can't tell them how to eat. Not fact. That's been starving all their life. Do do any of them ever like hit you up? You know what I'm saying? Like, do have you ever you had a chance to talk to any of them? Yeah, I, I have a, you know, you know, I have a, a chance to talk to a few of them. But like I said, you know if. if if I'm telling you, come over here and sit in this Buick LeSabre, hmm. and somebody say, come sit in this Maybach, sometimes the Maybach going to be the first thing you go to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, like I said, you know, I could take a nigga to the water. I just can't tell him to drink. Can't make him drink, bro. You know, so I, like I said, I pray for him. Just, that's all you could do is just pray for all the rappers that they'll, you know, they'll quit the beef thing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and then after bloodshed, you wonder, can it be quit? That can it be peace? Yeah, you know, after blood. But will those boys ever be able to put out a record that uh, you know doesn't involve somebody getting shot or somebody getting killed or you know and 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 to be into into their avail? Will the people receive it as as with the same uh, fanfare as they received the 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 you know the controversial records? I think the controversial shit has got so trendy. Yeah, till it's hard to stop. Like. Because when they make one and it go big, they make one to be bigger. You know what I'm saying? I, I, 
Then me and Jack gonna lie, it's, it's a lot of things I could put my finger on, but I can't put my finger on yeah. that one. Yeah. Like I said, I just keep praying and hoping that it change. Cause you know, on the outside looking in, right? We hear a record like Who I Smoke. We hear that record and we think, oh man, they done flipped the white girl shit. And they done put the beat on, all this shit mm-hmm. hard. And then you realize, and then you, you do your research and you realize that Bibby is a person. That that's that that died. He's not coming. That got family. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And 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 and, and these people that are speaking about and bo- on both sides, you know what I'm saying, are people that are not going home. You know what I'm saying. And it's just it, when you look at that end of it, it almost makes you feel like, well, damn, are, are we wrong for cheering on this type of music? Are we wrong for viewing it? Are we wrong for streaming it? Are we wrong for, you know, son that got shot, then it got popped, you know what I mean? Are we wrong for doing TikToks to someone else's deaths? I know I wouldn't do it, personally. And I wouldn't like my kids to do it. I wouldn't like nobody in my circle to do it. But to reach out to the mass, something got to have something to give them to tell them how to do something. Yes, sir. I ain't got nothing again but hope. <laughs> and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, man, there's something else I got to talk about before we get out of here, man. Um, you, you, you of sorts, you, 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 you. It seems like you see the star before the star is born. Like you know, with me getting into, the, into this industry, I was able to see Fujiano before he was Fujiano, mm-hmm. and, and 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 I knew when I saw him, like he's different. You feel what I'm saying? If he keeps his head on right, you know, he's going to go far. And I've seen artists that come to, like, showcases and things of that nature. I'm like, in two or three years, this kid's going to be big. You feel what I'm saying? Like, um, talk to me about, like, just just, just seeing just seeing the potential in artists, and, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and keeping an eye on them. Like this kid I just signed um, at, 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 at the label, um, Rondo. Hit him up, Rondo. Mm. Um, I got to get him on the podcast, too. Let's go. Yeah, he hard. And um, I met him like three, about three and a half years ago. And this kid just had it, you know. And um, his rap, everything was good. And um, he went and did a bid for like two years, and I stuck with him. Just keep talking to him, talking yes, sir. to him. And I promised him, I said, nigga, when you jump, I got you. Yeah. And when he jumped, I got him. And uh, we, we put out one project with him the other day that did real good. We about to put out other project now with a bunch of features and stuff like that. And when, whenever I see a kid, I could tell that they want this. Mm. You know, like I, I just seen this little kid in um, our little Tuki. I saw him in um, Tallahassee about 17. He was rapping. And the whole crew was just on the stage with him. And yeah. They just getting it in, and he just happy. Like, this is what I need to do. Yes, this sir. is me, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? He wants it, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And I, 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 tell, I tell artists all the time, I'd rather you spam me mm. than, don't, than, than expect me to just come find you. Let me know you want this, because if I want it more than you, I, I ain't fucking with yeah, you. Yeah, you can't make nobody be nothing they don't want to be. You know, so artists would, would drop shit in my DM and, Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm at dialysis. Yeah. I'm hooked up for four hours. So boom, boom, I'm just listening. And I send back fire emojis, sound good. This one needs some work. This one. And um, a nigga, called, <laughs> nigga hit me one day. <laughs> hit me one day and said, hey, man, um, um, give me some feedback. I got to send you a couple of songs. You know? Yes, sir. So I sent him this, um, this review I'm having. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that nigga's a damn, this is me is a damn, this is me. Yeah, it is. You know, say so I mean I'm in the eyes, I'm on some machine changing my blood, nigga. Like, come on, let's work. Yeah, because if you can't you know? if an artist can't bet on themselves, how can you bet on them? You feel what I'm saying? So it's a couple of them I got a little mad, but they got around to it. They 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 be all right. They, they be all right. <laughs> now now the money question that every artist, because I'm pretty sure artists are gonna see this, the money question that every artist wants to know is what is T I G looking for in an artist? To sign, we have a, um TIG is different now. We have a um a distribution company called Wealth Distribution, and um we you know what we tell the people you can come just like 
other distribution companies. You can get an hour, but we'd like you to have a little budget mm -hmm. to purchase you some marketing, and we hook you up with the marketing people so people can know that it's there. Because if we say 80 to 20, we're not going to get nothing if nobody knows it's there. Exactly. And one thing people fail to understand that marketing is a must. That's it. You feel me? It's tricky. You know, but it's, it's a it, must. It's a must. You got to have it. The right DSPs, you know, the ads, the Google ads, Facebook ads, all, you got to have this shit. When you think this shit is, is just regular? <laughs> no, you got to have it. You know, Budweiser, one of the most drinkers, beer, anybody drink, and they advertise every day. Because what? People stop drinking every day. Yes, sir. You feel me? So they advertise something, but they didn't market it. And with, with TIG, I'm looking for people to sign. I want somebody who make it at least 25, three grand a show and have some decent numbers. So we know if we put in, we can get something out. Exactly. People want you to invest in them and don't know what you can. People don't do that no more. It's a whole different thing. That's why so many independent labels out there because a lot of people are not going to just invest three, four hundred thousand in you and not even knowing if you can bring them back ten cents. And they'd be mad about it and be like, well, how the hell am I supposed to get this buzz by myself? Like, I don't know, get your investor. Yeah. If you're good enough, somebody good investing. Enough. Exactly, exactly. You know? That's where the talent you know? come into play. I be feeling bad, too. I be feeling bad for them because they're asking legitimate questions. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting them a legitimate answer. You know, I got a bunch of grandkids. I put my kids through school, but now I got to help my grandkids. Yes, sir. I can't really put my money on artists. Because my family needs it, you know mm, what I'm saying? Mm. But if you got a budget, a little budget, I can help you. Yeah, it is. You know, because it's so a you job. Gotta do, just, get, just do some business. It's a job. It's a job. I can't sit up all night doing stuff and just go home and can't pay my bills in the morning. You ain't got nothing to show for it. It don't make no sense. Yeah, for real. Congratulations. I hear you are a, 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 a new father. No, no, a new husband. Yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Hey, man. <laughs> Big A still out here winning, y'all. <laughs> hey. hey. Congratulations, sir. You still out here putting it down. Hey. The greatest story about this, dog, the greatest story about this is I, I had eight baby mamas. Mm. I got 12 kids. Okay. And I was just uh, everywhere I lived, I had I call my home. Daddy. <laughs> and um, I was going through life about six years ago. You know, me and my mm, you know, my son mama broke up. I met this chick, and we just became friends. And yes, sir. One thing leads to another. But like my, I got a life coach. And my life coach always tell me, like, because I used to be a habitual cheater. <laughs> you know, I used to take a shower with my phone in a Ziploc. Cool, boy. <laughs> you know, because I was a habitual cheater. Yes, sir. So I said, fuck it, you know. I just, with this chick. I said, I'm not going to cheat. Mm. I'm going on six years. I ain't mess with nobody, see nobody, nothing. And God has provided so much for me. I mm. wish I'd have done that earlier. Mm. I have to chase no money. Everything come to you. You know, we, we have a beautiful house with decent cars. And God just bless us. Yes, sir. But when you're out there doing all this old crazy stuff, man, you don't get that blessing like that. So I'm just telling, I'm not telling nobody they got to do what I do. Yes, sir. You know, I'm older now, so. Yeah. But it's the best thing ever happened to me. It's just having, being with a person of the same yoke. We laugh together, have movie night. We do this, we go to dinner, we do, man, it's just fun. We take vacations. We just, it's just fun, other than paying two, three rents, two, three cell phone bills, <laughs> buying bags. Like, bitch, your birthday again. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> damn. <laughs> you don't buy so many bags. You no, know, pimping expensive, man. bigger. Pimping is expensive. Man, you're the bag man. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Like, shit, did I just got your bag with your birthday last week? <laughs> three girls, you got three different bills, boy. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> but my life coach told me, he said, looking for a good piece of pussy, you're going to look for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> but looking for a soulmate, it's just going to fall into your lap. And that's what happened to me, and I thank God. I love my wife dearly. I love her to death. You know, I love her dearly. When I was sick, she took care of me. I was there for me. I ain't never had no worries. Yes, sir. You know, and that's and people need that in their life. But when you're in this business, you don't know who 
who is genuine, who, who really love you. Cause, yes, you know, hard. you got a couple. Of, you know, your, your your reputation. You got a few dollars moving around. You know what I'm saying? And a few dollars, some people might be a thousand. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Me and you might looking for a million. Yeah, I'd be like, like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, it's a thousand on the yeah. dresser. Oh, we scrap. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> A thousand nah, dresser hey, for us, man. that's bill. Like shit, I gotta go get some more money. Nah, man, I think it's I think it's uh I think it's beautiful, man, that you 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 still living. You still and you still living your best life, sir. You know oh, what I'm saying? Man, I do, I do. And uh and, and, and it's you know, I, I think you're a testament to the fact of the matter is that like you never too old to go after it. You never oh, never too old. never. You know, and I, 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 I hate to see people lose sight of their dreams or quit. Or you know what I'm saying, but like you know, you you, you definitely are a testament of that. It's like, man, look, as long as you still got breath, you know, breath in your lungs, man, you can go, you can go do it. Man, I tell people, man, this music shit was meant for me, it was made for me, because I'm not a carpenter, I can't build a house, I'm not a computer operator, I'm not that smart, I can't be a porn star because I come too fast, <laughs> you know. Man. I would have to, I would have to loop it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's the realness for me, baby. I'm going to tell you like the T.I.S. is, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of shit I can't do, but I know one thing I could do. I could mold that motherfucking crowd. Yeah, it is. And I know I could talk to people and let them look me in my eyes and know I'm very serious and sincere about what I'm saying. You know, because if I say I love you, I love you. It's two things in the world. The two biggest word is I love you and I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry is a greater word if you meet it. Mm. It take a lot yeah. to say sorry. Come on, man. If you mean it, it's a greater word. It take a lot I to say sorry. That love shit, I tell everybody I love them. My, yeah, yeah, my yeah. niggas, everybody. Yeah. You know, but I'm sorry It's a deep word. And a lot of niggas do not apologize. And that's why they laugh at it. Me, I feel, I feel for every nigga that went through the hood, through the trap, through whatever. Nigga, y'all need to go see some therapy. Yeah. Go get some therapy. That shit is good for you. Go tell somebody some shit that you won't tell nobody else. Niggas all be going through all this shit, man. Therapy, man. Niggas don't do that, but nigga, you need some therapy, man. Let's go talk to somebody. We, we, a lot of us, especially young black men, we, we have PTSD just from living life. You know, you don't even got to be a war vet to have PTSD, you know, if, if you're living in a war zone. You know what I'm saying? You seen people get killed. You just seen, you know, crazy situations, brains blown off on the side of the street or whatever. You know, you, you got PTSD, but, you know, it, 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 it it's not... For us, they expect us not to have any emotion. They expect us, you know, not to have any any lashbacks from the things that we've seen and things that we've endured. And you know, and, and black men, we're, we're supposed to be just just, just strong. Yeah. And, and sometimes I just think that we, you know, we it's it's important to help, you know, to to check in on your mental health. It's man, you got to man. You got to. You got to. look at that old boy that walked off the football. Field. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Shouts out AB, man. <laughs> man, bigger man, we could be here all day, man. I, man, I, I thoroughly appreciate you, man. I've enjoyed this. We, we definitely got to do a part two, man. We we got to do this more often, brother. Man, thank you, man. And thanks, such a man, for um, and my real cameraman over there. He's I've been putting in work. I, yes, sir. I've been watching shots forever, man. Like just 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 putting in work out late at night and. I'm looking at him. I said, at least I ain't the only one got to explain about my relationship. I'm trying. <laughs> but I go, where Look, you been? Oh, shit. Shot, shot get to it. Shot, shot, shot and got smart. Shot bring wife to the set now. <laughs> she be like, oh, no, you get the camera too, babe. <laughs> hey, I, I was at a point when a girl would call me, where you at Waffle House? <laughs> Wait, why you got to stop at Waffle House? I made you something to eat. I didn't want to wake you up. I was just trying to be nice. Daddy. <laughs> you want me to bring you some Waffle House? <laughs> yeah, bring me something to eat too. <laughs> oh, love, brother. Bigger man, I appreciate you once again, man. Um, you know, Let these folks know where to follow you at, even though they already know, you know what I'm saying? Anything you got going on that you need to tell the world, please, by all means, do. Man, you can follow me at Bigger Ranking Zero Zero. It's everywhere, same thing, Facebook, everything. And I got an album coming this year, my documentary, I swear to God. When y'all see my documentary, y'all going to be like, he knew him? Like, it was a group in, um, called Dirty. Mm. All them, I took them niggas through every Chitlin Market, everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, Juvenile, all of them. Y'all can see where I, how I came up in this game and how I became the biggest record breaker. Because when I get with an artist, I told them everywhere with me like they're my family. Mm -hmm. Like that's my baby mama. You know what I'm saying? And, um, Come on, nigga, get in the car. And I, I ain't going to stop until they make it. 
If they're not going to make it, then you won't see me just riding around with them because I tell a nigga, if you ain't got it, you just ain't got it. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck how much money you got. Yeah, it is. If you ain't got it, you just ain't got it. Hey, man, you can follow me at Ugly Money Nietzsche. That's Ugly Money N-I-C-H-E. Remember, the bigger the dream, the bigger the risk, the bigger the payoff. This has been the Ugly Money Podcast with the legendary Bigger Rankings.